Perfect. So let's get into the discussion. Being the 29th day of September 2022, we expect the president to address the joint sitting of parliament later on in the afternoon at around 2.30 p.m. Um, that's the Senate and the National Assembly during his first State of the Nation address. What should we look forward to um, in his speech? Of course, there's a lot in his manifesto, but is it going to be saved? to fit this particular occasion and what should you expect moving forward so far we've seen him you know hitting the ground running and um, uh, trying to meet some of his pledges he made during the campaigns and what should you expect today in the afternoon i have got two gentlemen in studio two honorable members one is uh, Jafeth nyakundi who is a member of parliament kitutu church in north and uh, honorable godfrey Orsosi, who is the vehiga County Senator. Gentlemen, Karibuni Sana. Sandy, Sandy. Uh, perhaps I should take this opportunity to congratulate you. I know it's never too late. Um, you moved from where you are and now you're a Senator of, of Higa. Yes. It was a tough battle. Uh, uh, yes, it was a tough battle. Mm -hmm. Every election is a tough battle. Yes. Uh, but I thank God uh, that uh, people of Higa mm. uh, had faith in me. And they overwhelmingly voted me as their senator. Yes. Um, uh, we got votes across the county. And um, it's interesting because we had uh, about 14 mm. candidates. candidates vying for the seat of senator. Yes. And I emerged uh, victorious uh, with uh, over 60. 2,000 votes, uh, the second person coming with around 25,000. That's a huge so margin. So it was a huge, huge win. Yes. And I thank God for that. Mm. I also thank the people of Vihiga for having faith in me and also coming out in large numbers to vote for me. Mm. And having the fact that you, you moved parties. Yeah. Yes, from ANC to ODM. Uh, I think... Uh, Vihiga was largely an Azimio area. Mm. Uh, you know, Hone Borela Odinga got over 63% of the vote, in presidential the vote. Yes. And uh, Hone Bo William Ruto got uh, the remaining 37% mm. of the vote. Uh, ODM, uh, which is part of the Azimio, mm. also produced the highest number of uh, MCA. Uh, out of the 25, uh, ODM has 10 mm. MCS, mm -hmm. and then the other Azimio party have two. Then we have independents. Uh, the second uh, largest party is probably ANC, yeah. which is seven uh, MCS. Mm -hmm. uh, you are also aware that the governor of Vihiga is also ODM. Mm. Who and is the like speaker, serving his second term? And the speaker of Vihiga is also ODM. So ODM is a dominant party in Vihiga mm. uh, because of the many. Uh, leaders who are elected on that party. Yeah. So we thank God for that and now elections are over. Mm -hmm. uh, we have been elected leaders from different parties. Uh, I have said that we are willing to work mm -hmm. with all the elected leaders uh, regardless of the political party affiliation yes. uh, they are in uh, so that we can deliver services to the people of Vihig. Mm -hmm. All right. Honorable Jafet Takundi, uh, Kitutu Church North yes. bestowed upon you the mantle of power in that constituency. How does it feel? <laughs> yeah, it feels nice. Yes. First of all, I want to thank the people of Kitutu Church North mm -hmm. for electing me as their member of parliament. Mm -hmm. Dominantly, it was Mzae uh, Jimmy Nuru mm -hmm. who was there for about 25 years. And uh, the people of Kitutu Church North decided to choose uh, one of the youngest members of parliament in the entire Kisi and the Gusi region mm. as their new member of parliament. Uh, it was nice. It's nice being in parliament. Mm -hmm. I'm getting to learn a lot. And uh, I am sure I'm going to represent the people of Kitutu Church North yes. very well and the people of Kenya. Mm. And I want also to thank them because uh, it is the first time ever to have a very young person in parliament. Mm from Kitu to Church North. All right. Predominantly, we have the old guards from there. We had uh, Onyonka, now Jimmy Angwenyi, mm. and now I'm here with the UDA ticket, mm. uh, where we have the government for Kenya Kwanzaa, mm. led by President uh, William Samoy 
are a proto. Yes. Yes. All right. All the best. Uh, the end of the day is now service delivery to Kenyans who, yes. who elected you, yes. and wish you all the best in the next five years. It's it's a tough battle ahead. So let me start with the Honorable Sotsi. Um, the cabinet is out so far. I think we can still start from that particular point, the 12 nominees. Um, what is your take on that? Uh, are you satisfied so far with uh, the pick, the president's pick? Well, I think uh, I belong to the Azimio coalition. Mm. And uh, yesterday in parliament, we gave our statement. Yes. And indicated that uh, uh, we are not happy with the cabinet that was appointed by William Ruto. Uh, because one, if you look at the cabinet, mm. it reminds you of Kano era uh, cabinets, yeah. how they looked like. Uh, you remember those days of Sharif Nasir, yes. uh, Chotara, and uh, <laughs> those kind of people. So when you look at it, it reminds you of those days. Um, we, I think we had graduated from that kind of thing yeah. during uh, President Kibaki's time and uh, even Uhuru's time. Uh, so to us, we think that this cabinet, it was uh, just uh, a cabinet where the president was just rewarding his friends. Mm people who campaigned with him. But matters of competence, experience, know-how mm. were not considered. Mm. Uh, so we do not think that this cabinet will deliver at all mm -hmm. uh, because of the caliber of people who were appointed. Secondly, mm -hmm. uh, some of the people uh, who have been listed there as nominees are facing active criminal cases mm. in court. Mm -hmm. uh, the agriculture nominee, uh, Lin Churi, Churi. Mm -hmm. you know he's uh, facing criminal charges, rape charges. Uh, Aisha Jumwa yes. is facing murder charges in Malindi. You remember the case of uh, shooting that mm -hmm. happened during a by-election in Malindi. Uh, and uh, others who also have integrity issues mm. there. Uh, in that list. So we w have promised that uh, the vetting is not going to be a walk in the park. That's like pre pre preempting to the yeah, so getting ready for you. It is not going to be a walk in the park. Mm. Uh, we have dispatched our researchers to carry out a thorough research on each of the nominees. Mm. And the side of Azimio, we are going to be very objective. Mm. Uh, when vetting these individuals to ensure that uh, Kenyans get the right leaders as stipulated in the law, particularly uh, Chapter uh, 6 of the Constitution of yeah, Kenya. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is uh, about mismatching of individuals and the portfolios that have been given to, to lead. Mm. Uh, you are aware that uh, uh, Kenya Civil Service is one of the most competent civil service, mm. uh, most educated uh, people are in the public service in Kenya. And now you give them Aisha Jumwa uh, to, be, to be the CS. Mm -hmm. uh, what a contradiction compared to the outgoing CS, uh, Professor Kobia. So, so we, we, it is for those reasons that we think that uh, this is a false start for the president and uh, I don't think that this cabinet will be able to achieve his uh, raft of uh, promises that mm. he made to Kenyans. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a bit uh, challenged. Mm. There were also violations of the law. Uh, during, uh, during the selection? Yeah, yeah. Uh, because uh, uh, you, you see he's created a position of uh, prime cabinet secretary, mm -hmm. uh, which is fine. He promised uh, Honorable Mudavadi that uh, he will appoint him as a prime cabinet secretary. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, there are gaps in law that he has not dealt with mm -hmm. because uh, the functioning of cabinet is to a large extent uh, um, managed through the national uh, government coordination act mm. uh, that says that uh, 
all cabinet secretaries are equal and they all directly report to the president about the functioning of their mm. um, uh, portfolios. That act does not also talk about uh, a prime cabinet secretary. Yes. And you know, in their, in, in their coalition agreement, mm -hmm. they promised that within 30 days, they are going to come up with a, an, a legislation. Yes to create the position of the prime cabinet secretary. Mm. Now that has not been done 30 days later. Uh, instead he has made an appointment and I wish the president could do justice to Honorable Mdavadi by ensuring that that amendment in law is done fast mm. before he appoints. Because uh, right now, as it is, any Kenyan can move to court and quash that decision. Mm. Uh, so. Uh, I am very happy because Honorable Mudavadi comes from my county and my people uh, have also expressed their happiness. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, we want the law to be followed. Yes. Uh, so that uh, we have a cabinet secretary who is anchored in law. Yes. Uh, so that one, I think the president was a bit uh, uh, fast mm -hmm. in making the appointment. He should have done the basics by ensuring that the law is amended in Parliament, assented to, and then make the appointment. Right. Secondly, uh, there appears to be some confusion between the role of uh, the Deputy President, Rigadi Gashagwa, yes. and the role given to Honorable Musali The clashing. A, um, a keen reading through the roles that he announced, then you begin to see that... Uh, the role of Mudavadi is mm. secondary mm. to the role of uh, Rigadi Gashagwa, which now complicates the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the other bit of illegality that the president made was in the appointment of the Inspector General of Police. Mm -hmm. You had him make an announcement that uh, Mutiambai has gone on leave and uh, there is a new commissioner. Uh, or oh, Inspector General of Police, yes, uh, Kome. Mr. Kome, mm. who is coming. That was an illegality because the process of appointment of the Commissioner of Police is uh, done by uh, uh, Police uh, Commission. Mm. NPS. Uh, yes. NPC. And is provided for in law. Mm. Uh, they carry out the recruitment process and uh, the process goes to parliament for vetting. Uh, no, the president appoints, mm. uh, and then the, the names are taken to parliament for vetting. Mm. Now, that process has not been done. Uh, so already, uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa team led by the uh, Honorable William Ruto, yes. is already uh, uh, making illegalities. And you remember during the campaign, mm. they said that they are going to uphold the rule of law. Okay. And they told us that uh, they are not going to do things yes. that uh, Honorable Uhuru Kenyatta was doing. Okay. Let me, uh, let me get to the violation of the law. Yes. Let me I get know clearly you can see uh -huh. they are violating the law. Yes. And uh, us from the Azimio side, we can promise that it is not going to be uh, business as usual in mm. Parliament. Mm -hmm on matters of adherence to the rule of law, mm. we are going to be very keen uh, to ensure that the law is followed. followed. Honorable Jefferson Jakuthi, let me get your opening remarks. A lot, he's spoken a lot. Yeah. And um, just to chime on what he said, lawyers divided on the legality of Budavadi's office. That is on yeah. the star, page yeah. 7. Yeah. According to while some believe that the office is built on quick constitutional sand that can be knocked off easily by a court petition, others assert that the office is legally fortified. I asked that question here yesterday on set and some people said that it could be an executive order, uh, it, it's still in the manifesto, it can still be created, but as you come to that, let me get your opening remarks. What should you expect um, moving forward in terms of now the cabinet has been appointed? He said that to him, not balanced at all. Um, thank you. Mm. To me, the cabinet that uh, President uh, William Ruto announced the other day is a well-balanced cabinet, mm -hmm. and it is in it is well balanced in all regions. And we want to thank him because uh, the people who William Ruto chose 
in their cabinet are very competent people. Mm. Look at Professor Keture Kinduki. Look at uh, Ezekiel Machogu. Look at Alice Wahome Aden Duale. Mm. These are very competent people who I'm sure will work for the people of Kenya and uh, will make sure that they deliver according to Kenya Kwanza, Kenya Kwanza's manifesto. Yes. I don't want to put the gun fast forward uh, because uh, he talked about Aisha Jumwa. Those are cases that are in court and uh, we believe everybody is uh, innocent until proven uh, guilty. I believe that uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa manifesto is going to be achieved using these uh, cabinet secretaries that uh, William Ruto chose. Mm -hmm. And us as Kenya Kwanzaa, we are going to we are going to make sure that uh, once the nominees are, the nominees comes to parliament we'll make sure that we pass them because we don't have laxity of time we need to deliver to the people of kenya because kenya has remained in the back for so long the last five years uh, you've seen the price of petrol the price of uh, food the price of unga mm. the price of uh, oil is on the higher side now we need to keep on working but i want to thank honorable Sosi because i can see they have clearly started their work of checking the government and uh, they know their position in government and for sure we know our position as kenya kwanza and we want to assure kenyans that this is what they wanted this is the presidency they wanted this is the kenya they wanted and we are going to take kenya forward you've already seen the president mm. has already started working on uh, like fuliza you saw yesterday he reduced the rates uh, he came on behalf of kenyans normally we never used to have people who used to talk on kenyans on behalf of kenyans to safaricom and uh, you saw him yesterday they were with the ceo for for safaricom and uh, kcb mm. and the prices of fuliza has gone down you've seen him he has already started working for the port in the manifesto what he said about the port the business in the port is back to the port mm. and the people of mombasa i am sure that uh, business will go back to mombasa and everything has started uh, rolling up okay um people expected 50 50 as uh, was promised during the campaigns the 50 yeah. 50 representation so perhaps out of 22 22 uh perhaps 10 uh, or even more uh, uh, you're not doing badly well. eight is not a bad number so far for women in uh, in cabinet yes and uh, there are more cabinet slots like for for devolution mm. which has not been announced and we are sure william ruto will add more women but for eight eight is not a bad number for women in cabinet yeah that's a very good improvement for the from the last re regime mm. and uh, i'm sure women are well represented in this cabinet and uh, even in parliament mm -hmm. we've had more women in parliament and more women in in the senate even in governorship we have more women in government in 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 government in governor positions yes so we are sure that uh, more women are coming up and we want to tell more women to come out and ask for elective seats mishima jafet as you've had uh mishima Sosi said that you should be ready for a real battle in parliament yeah yeah yes ah uh, yeah i know uh the as in your because the vetting process is thorough it's <laughs> <laughs> it's always it's always heated and intense there's also some walkout at some point yeah but most of these people who have been nominated are very competent people apart from maybe one two three cases which are in court and uh, one is always innocent until proven guilty as kenya kwanza we are ready for it we have the numbers we have everything that is required and we are going to pass the nominees that the president has mm. has uh, selected mm. yes Mishimo Sotsi, chapter six of the constitution i mean it's it's been a hard nut to crack since 2010 the constitution is here and even governors had to be given that extra oath to take uh as per chapter six but now we have got the three who are still have who still have some cases pending in court you see i've listened to my colleague here talking yes and um one of their defense line is that uh, they have not been proven guilty mm. but you see uh, if you read the spirit of chapter six is that uh, you do not have to be proven guilty mm. for you to uh, leave office uh, you, so long as there are any uh, active investigation mm -hmm. or a court case against you uh the most uh, responsible thing to do uh, if you are a leader is uh, not to continue holding a public office 
but you see the some leaders have taken uh, that advantage of that bit yes uh, to act with impunity and to continue serving our people if we are in another country uh, even the mere mention would automatically block you from office uh, uh, yeah. just mere mention will uh, block you into office or even your own conscience mm. you will just resign from office so we need to get to that level and i think one of the things we need to do as a country is to try and tighten chapter six of the constitution uh, so that uh, some of these people mentioned in scandals mm. and it's not just aisha jumwa even moses Kuria has an active case before the ESEC mm. on the usage of cdf um, uh, in uh, Gatundu South. So I think uh, if really the Kenya Kwanzaa people believe in the rule of law, as they told us during yes. the campaign, then they should have demonstrated that by appointing people who do not have active criminal cases. Mm. Uh, but um, uh, if you get into office and you disregard that and you go on, on, on and on and on, uh, I think with the time mm. it is even going to be worse uh going back to the issue of uh, legality of uh, honorable mdava disappointment mm -hmm. um the best approach would have been that first of all the position should have been uh, taken through public participation mm. do you remember the ruling on uh, uh, cabinet administrative secretary yes he said that there was no public participation and i've seen uh, Kenya Kwanza in preparation of uh, making uh, numerous appointments they have started the process they have gone to public service commission and asked public service commission to lead the process of public participation i think they they just needed to take some time and do the same for prime cabinet uh, secretary mm. so that it goes through all the legal processes it comes to parliament and then an appointment is yeah, made. Yeah. But as is, as is, is it uh, the way it is now, it is illegal. Uh, you can hide behind uh, the fact that the president can choose anyone among the 22, but let the law be followed. Mm. Because this is an administration that promised Kenyans that they are going to uphold the rule of law and let them demonstrate that. Yeah. Uh, let them not cut corners and tell us, oh, uh, uh, this is uh, legal when it's not legal. Mm. I also talked about the appointment of the IG, which did not clearly did mm. not follow the law, and uh, those are issues that I expect uh, my colleague here to respond to. Mm. On the issues of uh, Parliament, uh, Parliament, the vetting process. Yes, uh, it will be interesting. Uh, my colleague here is. Uh, uh, joining us uh, mm -hmm. for the first time, I think it will be an opportunity uh, to see how things are done. Uh, and nothing stops members from rejecting the appointments. And we call upon the Kenya Kwanzaa uh, legislators to think about this country. Mm -hmm. Let them not think about uh, political parties. Because parliament has to remain independent. We do not want to see a situation where we have state capture. And, uh, you know, surprisingly, yes. uh, our, pe our colleagues from Kenya Kwanzaa, they keep, they keep talking about state capture. And we are against state capture, state capture. But now, clearly, <laughs> you can see they are practicing the same thing. <laughs> eh? If a member of parliament who is supposed to debate objectively, look at issues objectively, mm. he is waiting to get signals from state house to do his work then that what do you call that yeah that is state capture so we want to look at these things objectively in a bipartisan manner and deal with them the nominees who don't meet the criteria mm. should be rejected mm -hmm. and the nominees who meet the criteria okay uh, they should be approved for example mm. i was very happy with the appointment of uh, Professor Njuguna Ndungu mm. uh, to be the uh, CS, yes, uh, CS treasury. for Treasury. Mm. That was a very quality appointment. And I applaud the President for that. But where we know there are gaps, I think as parliamentarians, we need to be very objective and mm. say, we have a gap here. The President, please, can you okay. give us another name? And the country moves on. Mm. And we are ready to do that so that the Kenya Kwanzaa can start uh, implementing their manifesto.
from, from what he's saying, <laughs> it's not going to be easy. But nonetheless, the aspect of, you know, now going through the process of nomination, and yeah. it's going to be tough because uh, Kenya Kwanza is here and the other side of Azimio is yeah. also there yeah. and the other parties. The process of vetting these uh, nominees is going to be a tough one. Yes. But the other aspect of proven guilty, you know, that innocence until, you know, how is it going to be if one is given that nod to be a CS for that matter and two, three days later you are called upon to respond to court issues? You'd imagine? Uh, thank you. I I'm raising this question because it's on the front page of the standard. Yeah. <laughs> no easy road for Hustler. Cabinet is also captured uh, on the Star newspaper. Yeah. I think this now, media now goes ahead to interrogate. Yes. All right? To interrogate. So it's always good to you know, go through them so that we can go to the next one. Go ahead. We as parliament will look uh, at the nominees mm. in, in details. And if there is any issue, I believe that uh, the members of parliament will... Uh, either approve yes. or nay. But I believe that we cannot crucify those who have cases in court until they are proven, they're proven guilty. Mm. Because that is how the rule of law, that is how the rule of law says. And for the position of uh, the chief minister for, for Musali Mudabati, yes. that was a very good uh, nomination for President William Ruto, because this is someone who has been in government before. This is someone who has a lot of experience, and this is someone who really wants good for the people of Kenya. And I believe that uh, his position is uh, validly there, because uh, this is someone who's just in charge of all other ministries, and uh, I don't have, I don't see any problem with that because. Uh, previously, we had uh, Fred Matiangi, mm. who was like the like the chief minister initially before uh, during uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta's time. Yes, and there is no much difference between uh, Musale Mudavadi, Musale Mudavadi's position right now and uh, Matiangi's position back then. So I believe that uh, this is rightfully just a right position, and we as members of parliament. We approve it, and we don't have an issue with that. If Azimio has an issue with that, then we'll meet in Parliament and uh, square that out. Mm. Yeah. Okay. You sound so confident. Yeah. All right. Let me start with you, Mishimio Sosi. What should you expect in the afternoon? Uh, the joint sitting today at 2:30 p.m. Uh, a lot is happening so far. 15 days, 16 days later into office. Uh, yes. Um, it is provided for in the standing orders. Mm that the uh, president will address uh, a new parliament. This is the 13th parliament, so he's right in order to uh, address a joint sitting of parliament mm. uh, this afternoon. Uh, what is important is what he's going to tell parliament. And uh, personally, I'm very keen uh, to know uh, how he's going to implement the bottom-up uh, economic model. Yes. Uh, as you are aware, bottom-up economic model has worked nowhere in this world. No single country has uh, ever implemented that model. So as parliament, we would be listening to him to tell us how that model is going to uh, work, what are the kind of legislations mm. the government is going to propose mm -hmm. to uh, legalize that model, what budgetary provisions are going to be put in place to uh, make it work, uh, we will also be expecting that he talks about uh, cost of living. Mm. Uh, you remember during uh, the Kenya Kwanza campaigns, they used to talk about cost of living. That uh, the cost of living is so high in this country, uh, cost of fuel is so high, unga is so high, and m many other things. Yeah. Uh, several days into their government, we are not... Uh, we, we are seeing a lot of uh, challenges on their end. Uh, you remember now the price of uh, fuel has gone up mm. instead of going down after the removal of the subsidy. Uh, cost of unga is also still high. So we want the president to tell us what are the specific measures mm -hmm. he's going to put in place to reduce the cost of living. Uh, my colleague here has talked about Fuliza and all those are uh, cosmetic things uh, that uh, 
Safaricom ought to have done. In fact, I was in the last committee of ICT mm -hmm. in the last parliament, and that was one of the recommendations we did when we did a study on uh, telecommunication sector. Mm -hmm. We recommended the price, the charges should go down. When and not just this? and not just Fuliza. When was this? Uh, in the last parliament, uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, sometime back in 2020. There, yeah. we did a study okay. as the ICT committee, which was adopted by Parliament. So, I think so the Safaricom, what was missing? Safaricom has just implemented what had been recommended earlier. Okay. okay. Uh, so, I don't expect uh, William Ruto and his team to take advantage of that. Uh, and this thing of uh, CRB, uh, CRB, yes, we know a lot of our youth are in CRB. But there are procedures to be followed mm. uh, because these are companies which have lent out money and they want to f uh, find out how they get back their money. So we expect the president to implement the tangible things yes. he promised Kenyans in his manifesto. Uh, the other interesting thing I would want to hear from him is that in his manifesto, mm -hmm. he promised that he's going to ensure that the two-thirds gender balance work. Now, we have just left the elections. We are not yet, we have not achieved the two-thirds gender balance. And here is Maraga's uh, advisory still hanging on us. Mm. How is the president going to achieve the two-thirds gender balance within this 13th parliament? And even in private sector, even the promise that the cabinet will have 50% mm. women, that has not come to pass. Uh, so we expect him to tell us a lot about that. Yes. We also expect him to tell us a lot about uh, involvement of uh, Mamambogas, involvement of uh, Boda Bodas, mm. involvement of hustlers in his government. You've seen so far the cabinet that mm. he appointed. Mm -hmm. There's no single Mamamboga. There is no single border border. There is no single hustler. How is he going to integrate these people in his government? Okay. We are also uh, interested to know, he talked about the hustlers fund, and you know we have the youth fund, mm. we have a Weso fund, we have the women enterprise fund. We want him to tell us what is this special about the hustlers fund? How different is it going to be from this existing fund? And where is the money going to and come? And you expect this to be captured in his yeah, speech yeah. today? Yeah, you know, the first sitting, okay. the address in the first sitting, the president lays out his agenda before for the, the parliament. And that agenda okay. emanates from the manifesto mm. that they told Kenyans. So we'll be looking forward to to all these things mm. and uh, particularly his agenda for the 100 days okay we, which which he promised a number of things yes and we are waiting to see uh, how those things will turn out in the next 100 days all right they uh, actually less less by how many days he's been in 15 yes so 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 those are the th tangible things mm. will be uh, waiting to hear from Absolutely. the Absolutely. All right. Jafet, let's take a break. And when you come back, I'll also ask the same question. But not that you're being the mouthpiece of the president, but uh, you've heard from Honorable Sorsi what we should expect in the president's speech at 2.30 p.m. in Parliament. All right. Let's take a break. And when you come back, our conversation still continues. What should you expect during the State of the Nation address at 2.30 p.m.? I've got two legislators in the House. We'll be back shortly. <laughs> All right. Uh, welcome back. Um, Mishmir Jafet says that his phone can stop ringing as late as 2 a.m. Please. They also have a life. Okay? They also have a life. Okay. Mishmir Jafet, before you took a break, uh, you heard what Mishmir Sosi said. And um, what should you expect in the president's speech today? I know it's going to be more than one hour, and yeah. we expect a lot. The way he put it is the manifesto, the Kenya Kwanzaa manifesto, should be structurally captured in his first inaugural speech yes. that is a speech that is yeah. either is going to hit it or is going to miss it yes yes 
Okay. I know Kenyans, uh, I expect a lot from uh, President uh, William Ruto, mm. more especially on the food uh, food food sector because uh, the prices of food are very high yes. price of unga is very is a little bit high and the uh, price of fuel but uh, all these uh, has the president has already started working on it more especially if you see he reduced the price of uh, subsidies like fertilizer mm. from 6500 to 3500 that is enough goodwill to show that uh, the president uh, has already started working and the president means well for this country or uh, also she had talked about uh, the price of uh, fuel uh, the subsidies were removed because uh, we believe that we need to start standing on our own. Only five companies were benefiting from the, the subsidies. In six months, about 60 billion was uh, spent on subsidies with only five companies, yeah. while the rest of other small uh, petroleum uh, companies were not able to benefit from this. Mm. We believe that uh, with due time, we were only 15 days into into government mm -hmm. and uh, we've already started we've already shown the goodwill in terms of the subsidies for unga and i believe that the subsidies for fertilizer and i believe that uh, with due cost uh, everything will come down the cost of living in this country will come down because i know william ruto is a hustler mm -hmm. he's been there before he knows the kind of problem that uh, the hustlers are undergoing and i believe that uh, his speech today will dwell more on the on the food subsidies and uh, the rest and um, third secondly uh, the issue the issue to do with uh, the issue to do with uh, petroleum I've already talked about petroleum mm -hmm. the issue to do with housing mm -hmm. he is very keen on the housing program program in this country uh, he he had talked about the housing program that the ones that are going on in Pangani yeah. the ones that are going on in Kibera uh, I believe that with due with due time, the price of all these things will go down. Mm. Yeah, because at the end of the day, um, what he's going to set out is in in his first speech, is going to set the whole agenda for Kenya, Kwanzaa, and what he is planning to do for Kenyans. Yes, yes, yes. So far, how would you rate President's performance? Fifteen days later. Fifteen days later, I rate him at uh, eighty percent because he, he has already shown the goodwill mm. to the people of Kenya. Mm. Like the Hustlers Fund. Today, I'm sure most people will want to hear about the, the Hustlers Fund, mm. which uh, we were our main campaign tool uh, during campaigns. The Hustlers Fund is one of the biggest ideas that President William Ruto has ever come up with. Mm. The young people will be able to get loans without a lot of, a lot of issues because in like the, like other loans you require a lot of you require a, lot, a collateral you call a, a lot of things so that you'll be able to get these loans but with the hustlers fund he will ease up the ways and means of getting these loans how mamamboga will be able to get this loan how boda boda will be able to get this loan and i believe kenya will move forward mm. uh, through the knee of william Ruto. okay um during his campaigns he promised different you know um pledges yeah, yeah. running into billions of shillings so yes. let me ask you how is this going to be actualized for example the 50 billion shillings hustler fund every year we as 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 a uh, as kenya kwanzaa mm. we believe there's a lot of money that goes into waste mm. we are going to make sure that we fill these gaps so that this money that is going to waste will go to the to the hustlers fund yes. and the money that used to be in the uh, youth fund can be diverted into her to the hustlers fund so that they can be able to help the common man mm. who is down here mm. yes we should also say you've been in parliament and the process of allocating funds always requires a uh, legislative process i don't know how this is going to be so clear in terms of even allocating uh, different constituencies, 100 million shillings per year as per his pledges during campaigns. How easy or hard is it going to be to allocate these funds to different uh, accounts for usage? Well, uh, uh, as you are aware, uh, we already passed a budget mm. for 2022-2023. Uh, so for him to uh, seek to incorporate his ideas, yes. Uh, he will need to come up with a, with a, a supplementary budget. Mm. 
but as you're aware a supplementary budget is not supposed to overhaul the entire budget yeah it's supposed just to deal with a few emergency issues so he will have to wait until uh, practically he will have to wait until the second the next financial year mm -hmm. which is 2023 2024 mm -hmm for him to factor in most of the things that he is talked about. Now, the Hustlers Fund, uh, remember I said that would be interesting to hear from him mm. how he's going to operationalize that. Uh, I have read somewhere where he was saying that uh, he's considering putting 50 billion into Foliza. That will be a recipe for chaos. Mm. And that will be corruption. Uh, you cannot put public money into a private investment. That is even against the public uh, procurement, uh, uh, public finance management mm. act provisions. So that's why I said we as parliamentarians, people who are experienced on matters of uh, financial management mm. and the parliamentary processes, we really are very keen to see how he's going to uh, churn out this thing of uh, hustler fund yes. uh, within the law. Uh, because as you are aware, we have a number of funds mm. uh, around and uh, there are plans to merge these funds so that we have one fund. Uh, we merge Weso Fund, mm. uh, Youth Enterprise Fund, Women uh, Enterprise Fund mm. into one fund. Uh, and, I, and I think that's where the so-called Hustler Fund comes in. Uh, if he does the way he has right. had him say yesterday, then he's going to get into legal or uh, uh, miles, uh, 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 minefields. So he needs to tread very carefully how he wants to do it. The borrowing, the repayments, and all that is very key. So very comprehensive legal framework is required to um, implement uh, uh, what he talked about. Um, uh, we have also seen the president also say that he wants to increase the statutory deduction for NSSF. Mm -hmm. uh, that is fine. But now let's ask ourselves, how has NSSF utilized the literal contribution that have been made by uh, members of the public? Yeah. Uh, we have reports in Parliament, Auditor General reports, that have questioned the usage of funds at NSSF. Mm. The investment decisions that I've made in NSSF have no value for money. Mm -hmm. uh, and we cannot just pump money into NSSF uh, when the little that has been contributed is being misused. Yes. I think if I was the President, I would first of all audit uh, the, the money that uh, has been put in mm. by Kenyans into NSSF before I recommend additional uh, contribution by members of the public. Yeah. Uh, because uh, if he does that, the rest of us on the Azimio side, we can read that uh, Kenya Kwanzaa is trying to manufacture scandals. Uh, very soon you will hear there is a huge scandal at NSSF. Mm -hmm. Because why do you want to put more money into NSSF mm -hmm. and yet the little that we are putting there as contributors is not accounted for? Okay. These poor investment decisions have been made and uh, uh, contributors' uh, money are, are, are being lost every day. Mm -hmm. So we would like to first of all get a proper legal framework in place we want to do a proper audit of NSSF mm. before we recommend additional contribution mm. uh, to NSSF, mm. the way the president is okay. recommending. Mr. Mujafa, as it, as it stands, it seems that the other side of Azimio is ready for the president's um, uh, speech. And the real actualization and what begins in parliament, because every step and every legislation will have to go through a process. Yes, and yes. Kenya, uh, uh, Azimir is ready for that. Yes. It must be a real battle that you should expect moving forward. Yeah, we are ready for any battles that uh, Azimir are ready to bring. Mm. But uh, we want to assure Kenyans that we as members of parliament, any legislative that will be brought to parliament for the sake of the people of Kenya, we will make sure that 
we pass these legislations to make sure that the cost of living has gone down. For example, he has talked very well about the, he has talked about NSSF. NSSF, uh, ever since time immemorial, we've been, uh, we've been contributing about 200 shillings as a person. We want to increase, we want to increase the amount that we contribute to NSSF so that we can be able to increase our reservoirs as a country. Mm. There's no need of us going to pick to borrow loans out of the country at very high interest rate. We can increase our contribution to NSSF so that we as a country we are able to borrow from NSSF mm. at cheaper rates and from within the country. So the increment that uh, we were we were requesting uh, the, as a country to con for contribution in NSSF will be able to sustain the country in terms of uh, taking loans internally instead of picking loans out of the country. Yes. Second thing is NHIF. Mm. NHIF, we contribute, the, uh, the, the, right now we contribute about 1,700 to NSSF. We wanted to increase the amount of money that we contribute in NSSF. You get someone who's earning about 15,000 contributing the same amount with someone who's earning about uh, 100, 200, 300,000, mm. even up to six figures. So we wanted to bring up a law in parliament that will increase the kind of money that we contribute to NSSF yes. so that we can be able to sustain the universal health care that, that the president promised to do. Kenyans, mm -hmm. and we are sure that this will come to pass. What lies ahead in terms of economy? Uh, a lot, a lot lies up ahead in terms that of. That is where the, there's a there's a huge expectation, even as we wait for the president's speech. The key issue here is economy. There's we a lot. Remedy, yes. There's a lot lies in terms of economy. Mm. One is food production. If we increase the food production in this country, a uh, automatically our 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 income will increase mm. and then the economy will improve secondly is manufacturing mm. we intend to put a lot of money in manufacturing mm. so this manufacturing will create a lot of jobs will create uh, employment and for sure will increase the gdp of this country mm. thirdly is the housing program we intend to build a lot of houses in this country and these will create jobs this will be able to sustain uh, our economy and thirdly people the common man will be able to get a house for five thousand he will be able to pay a mortgage of five thousand shillings and the end at the end of it all this house will be yours right now the president is giving out is they're building houses mm. for one million shillings this one million shilling house you're able to pay five thousand every month as mortgage and the end, at the end of it all you're able to this house will be yours mm. and you'll be using this house as collateral to get how, loans how, in what's, what's the, what would be the criteria any kenyan would just walk in pick a unit and say now how would be the criteria because that's now where the real deal is no the criteria because is like we've also had the issue of uh, some houses in gara for example yes 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 yes, 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 yes there yes. are some scandals yes the houses in like the houses in Gara, mm. the guys who were there, the name their names were written down mm. and they were given the first priority when those houses were built. Same thing here. We have Bomayangu. Mm. In if you go to the Ministry of Housing in their website, there's something called Bomayangu. You go to Bomayangu, you apply for a house yes. and you can only get one house as an individual. You cannot get two. Once you get one the lottery will pick another person mm. that will be easier for each and every kenyan in the near future to get a house and own a house in this country mm. owning a house will be very very easy in this country compared to building your own house mm. so i believe that this will be a good opportunity for the people of kenya and the mamamboga border border guys to get a house in okay. this country okay which must also you are in the last parliament mm. uh, just make me understand how bad is the economy because that's where we should expect a lot of the president's speech to tackle and how to revive the economy because he said that the last campaign was based on economy and issues based but the key one was economy how bad is the economy you're in the last parliament well uh, uh, the, the the truth is that uh, we are doing very badly mm. uh, in terms of uh, debt crisis mm -hmm. our debt uh, situation yes uh, is uh, not good because as we are speaking now, 
we have borrowed about 9.8 trillion. Mm. We are just remaining with around 200 billion to be borrowed mm -hmm. to reach the ceiling of 10, 10, uh, 10 um, trillion. Mm. So for the Kenya Kwanzaa team to borrow, they only have uh, a margin of 200 billion to mm. borrow. Uh, and um, uh, for them to borrow more, they will need to increase the ceiling. Uh, and uh, I'm seeing a situation where for them to implement the various uh, promises they have made to Kenyans, mm. they cannot afford not to borrow. They will have to borrow. <laughs> they cannot afford to borrow. And uh, like the other alternative, the other alternative is to increase taxes. Mm. And you can see uh, they do not have a clear physical uh, policy. Oh, uh, th that's why you hear them saying, oh, we are going to increase uh, contribution in NSSF. We are going to increase contribution in NHIF. They are looking for easier ways of doing it. But um, that will take time. Mm. That will need a lot of planning, a lot of legislation around it. So I'm seeing a situation where by if um, really they are very keen to implement what they have promised Kenyans, they will need to get resources. Yes. And those resources can either come through taxation, mm -hmm. they tax Kenya more, or they borrow. Mm. Uh, they also promised us that uh, when they take over uh, government, within 100 days, they will reduce the debt. They will renegotiate, they will do what? Mm. We are waiting to see how that is going to be done. Mm -hmm. And uh, you see, this debt problem cannot wholly be blamed on uh, former President Uhuru Kenyatta. Mm. Because I was in parliament when uh, Aden Duale, who was the majority leader, yes. fought with uh, us on the, the other side when they were trying to increase the debt uh, uh, burden. And uh, even recently, just before we went into election, mm. Uh, there was also an increase of the debt ceiling. And I saw Kimani Ichungwa, mm -hmm. who is a key member of the Kenya Kwanzaa team, played a big role uh, in parliament in influencing members to heighten the, the ceiling. Mm. So this problem of debt crisis uh, cannot wholly be blamed on uh, the last regime, which they were part of. Mm. But uh, it needs to be managed. Uh, I agree with them on the strategy of renegotiation, restructuring of the loans, but that is going to take time. Yes. In the meantime, they have a plate full of promises they made to Kenyans, mm. which will require money to finance. So how and, will uh, the, the next um, 12, 12 months into yeah, office yeah. will be like for the president? Well, we, well, if I was an advisor to the president... I will tell the president to reduce the excitement uh, and settle down and work in a more structured manner mm. uh, so that he can deliver on the promises he made to Kenyans. Mm -hmm. uh, when I said in a more structured manner, he needs to n understand what kind of legislations will be put in place to implement what he wants. Where are the resources going to come from? Because, you see, they made a raft of promises to us mm -hmm. We uh, want to see how they'll be done. They are already in the administration, and they are behaving as if they are in the campaign, making further promises to Kenyans. We want to see a real tangible action uh, through a well thought out and holistic approach mm. to these issues. And uh, that will have to involve parliament. Uh, that is why today we want to hear him tell us how he's going to achieve this. Mm. And... Uh, he cannot do that without uh, bipartisan approach in parliament. Remember, Zimio, we are a, a significant number mm -hmm. in both houses. Uh, in fact, in the National Assembly, uh, we are the majority. Mm. Uh, party. Which is the, there's still a contention. There is, but uh, we'll talk about that shortly. Yes. Maybe you can bring it up. Uh, yeah. We'll uh, explain a few things about it. Mm. So we are not a side that can be overlooked. If they want to achieve what they have promised Kenyans, mm. they will have to involve us in a bipartisan manner in parliament. Okay. Honorable Jafet, 
when you hear honorable sorts speak you must be getting worried because you are new in the assembly and as, as a young member of parliament the kind of energy um you expect at the end of the day after five years you'll expect to be like honorable sotsi here who started to slow down in his speech and you know start looking from from a distance but when you look at the first 112 uh, months in into president's office he talked about restructuring his cabinet you know getting legislations done making sure that the country is run structurally perhaps there is a lot more for the president immediately after his first speech what do you think uh, thank you. Honorable As you also wait for them in Parliament, because <laughs> some, some legislations will need bipartisan approach. Mm. Thank you. Thank right. you so much. Honorable Sosi says that we are still, uh, we are still in honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> are you? <laughs> we are not in honeymoon. Right. We've already started working. Mm. There are a lot of legislations that are going to come to Parliament mm. for the purpose of uh, maybe restructuring our loans, for the purpose of uh, building our country and these legislations we've already started working on them and once parliament starts uh, immediately parliament starts we are going to bring these legislations in parliament for the purpose of making sure that uh, the country goes forward he's been talking about uh, uh, the numbers mm -hmm. that they have the numbers uh, they are the majority in parliament i want to tell honorable Sosi. Uh, if they had the numbers in Parliament, uh, Honorable Marende could be the Speaker of the National Assembly right now. If they had the numbers in Parliament, Honorable uh, Farah Malim could be the Deputy Majority Leader. But we are the majority. That's why we were able to we managed to pick Honorable Honorable Nani Honorable uh, Wetangula yes. as the Majority Leader. Mm -hmm. We were able to pick the Honorable Shulei. Yeah, speaker, mm. we're able to pick Honorable Shulei as the deputy speaker. And we want to tell you that we have the numbers. We will show you the numbers in Parliament come once the session starts in Parliament. Okay. okay. Let me yeah. just respond to the issue of numbers. Go ahead. Uh, <coughs> now that you've raised it, you're going to it. Right. <laughs> Honorable Nyakundi is still a new member of Parliament. I think I'll advise him to get acquainted with the standing orders mm. of Parliament on the issue of determination of uh, majority and minority status. The standing orders are very clear. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't expect uh, the Speaker of the National Assembly, uh, one, uh, my good friend Wetangula, to divert from this. The standing orders are very clear that the determination of the majority and minority will be guided by the pre-election coalition agreements uh, which have been deposited with the registrar of political parties. Mm. It's in the standing orders. Uh, and um, the registrar has communicated to the clerk of the National Assembly mm. on uh, who belongs where. I know when he talks about the voting power they had for the speaker, we know what happened. We know what happened. Money changed hands. We know a uh, few parties were bought, like UDM mm. has gone, uh, PA has gone, but legally, those parties have not uh, exited Asimio. The coalition agreement are still there. They have not uh, deposited a counter coalition mm. agreement yes. uh, with the registrar of political parties because it is illegal to belong to two coalitions at the same time. Mm. So whereas they have signed some papers with the uh, Kenya Kwanza, they have not deposited the same with the registrar of political parties because the law prevents them to do that. Because once they do that, yeah. then it becomes an illegality. Uh, I, I know there have been peddling around uh, some rumors that uh, Azimio did not um, sponsor any MP. Mm. But I want to tell them that, uh, and this is point I think Hone Bonyakundi should take note, is uh, before we went for uh, sign down recess, we passed a law called the Political Parties Amendment Act 2022 that uh, basically integrated coalition political party as one of the options for engaging mm. in a political party. And it defines a coalition political party, uh, which as Mio is. Mm 
as composed of members, ordinary members, and political parties. Yes. So you can belong to Azimio as a member, okay. as an ordinary Kenyan. Mm -hmm. You can also belong to Azimio as a political party. So all the parties which have signed coalition with Azimio coalition legally are members of Azimio okay. political coalition political party. Yes. So all those people who have been elected there are Azimio coalition party mm. uh, members. So that argument does not arise. We don't expect uh, Honorable Wetangula to go against the law. Mm. We expect him to make it as simple as he has said, mm. that that is a simple issue. Follow the standing orders, follow the law, okay. political parties act, and the constitution of Kenya, and declare Azimio mm. as a coalition party. Right. If that is not done, mm. we will go to court. All right. We be, uh, I'm and we don't want a situation where mm. parliament is going to be uh, held hosted in court. All right. If they are driving us to that position, then we'll take that position. No honorable associate. Mishima, to Mishima, I'm, I'm, to, I'm told uh, we have a live event coming up shortly, so I'm told we have to wrap it up at right. that particular point. But we'll be in Parliament, yeah. so I should be able to catch up with you later on so that we can discuss more even thereafter. All right, we'll be speaking to Honorable Jafeth Nyakundi, who is Kitutu Church North, Kitutu Church North Member of Parliament, and Honorable Godfrey Sosi, who is now the Senator of Vihiga County. Gentlemen, thank you so much, and thank see you, you in Parliament later in the afternoon. Thank you. And all the best as you take up your roles. Thank, thank you. you. Thank All right. You. Thank you. That's where we wrap it up. Good morning.